This is truth be told. That not only are there reptilians here. New evidence of UFO fleets. We were close to nuclear war. To help you transform so that you can live your highest truth. We're not being told just because we're not ready for it. The stations of frequency, vibrational. The, uh, I was a homicide detective with LAPD. UFOs increase. Um, visitations. Halloween season is here. Today we're launching the month of Halloween. Ghosts, goblins, vampires, demons. And every Friday we have someone lined up to bring us the latest of hauntings and the night of the dead. But today we have Kurt Sandvik on the show. He is a host of his own podcast. He is a paranormal investigator and he was helpful at the first annual Parapod at Mentryville where he led tours of the haunted mansion and schoolhouse. He's been doing paranormal investigations for a better part of 20 years and his podcast was nominated for a Parapod Festival Award. I'm Tony Sweet with Truth Be Told. Please welcome to the Truth Be Told studios for the first time, Kurt Sandvik. Oh, Kurt, my savior. Oh, I love this. Are you kidding me? <laughs> my savior. I have to say before we even get started, when I say you were helpful, you weren't helpful. You were a lifesaver. Um, I so can't thank you enough. Like pe You say that, but honestly, it goes <laughs> both ways because you were so fantastic that I was like, I'll do anything you say. Like Aww, this, was, this was great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well, here's what happened. We had a, a psychic that was supposed to be there and... Uh, Something happened where they got food poisoning, so they couldn't make it. It was last minute, and we were scrambling. We're going like, oh, who are we going to get to tour these homes and, and this home and this schoolhouse? And and Robert said, hey, let's go ask Kurt. And I'm like, call him. And you were on your way, and you came yeah. up and blew people out of the water with your your investigation and your talk. So that wasn't you. just me. That was the actual ghosts. So I got to give right. a lot of the credit. Yeah, to them. right. Yeah, yeah. We, I guess, we do got to give them credit too. <laughs> um, so, well, first of all, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is unbelievable. I love this. Oh, thank you. And like I said, it's nice to have somebody in studio because normally, not that Zoom is bad. It's just. Face to face, no. it's nice to have people. In this is studio. great. I loved it. I walked in, everybody. Oh, it's so much fun. I'm, I know he had I'm a foot this. massage out there, all that good <laughs> stuff. Uh, well, before we get started uh, with ex exactly what you do, I always like to find out how people get into uh, the field that we are. Yeah. Because I always say everybody, almost everybody, not everybody, almost everybody has an experience. Of a UFO sure. encounter, a ghost encounter, Bigfoot encounter, whatever it is. So let's start off with your encounter that got you in sure. this field. Sure. Um, it was surprisingly, it was a ghost encounter at my grandparents' house. Oh. Um, my grandparents, their house used to be a farmhouse, or used to be a schoolhouse back right. before it was a farmhouse. And it, it was the schoolhouse was burnt in a fire so that my grandpa could buy it real cheap right, right. before the war right. and built up the house. Um, my mom thinks that the ghost that was in the house was actually her uncle. Oh. Because okay. even though he didn't die in the house, it was apparently very common to, instead of going to a funeral home to see the dead, they were just in your living room for a oh, week. Oh, the old school, yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is terrifying to me. I can't yeah. even imagine that as You're a like, kid. Could you like move over? I... <laughs> right? I got to go downstairs and see uncle. He's been dead forever. Right. But he, yeah. we'd hear him all the time. And as a kid, it was just like, oh, that's don't worry about it. And you just hear footsteps go across, you know, upstairs. Mm -hmm. Did and, everybody hear this? Oh, yeah. Okay. And everybody ignored it like it was nothing. <laughs> yeah. And would also say, I don't believe in ghosts. And I'm like, but you can clearly, it's not the house settling. Right. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, no, it's footsteps. And my mom would be like, oh, yeah, it's just the uncle. And I was like. But you don't believe. Yeah, but you can't say that <laughs> and say you don't believe in ghosts. So, right. you know, like I was that kid anytime the Scholastic School Fair went around. I'd buy every Bigfoot book, every UFO oh, wow. book, every ghost yeah. book. I was the weird kid. And and I would just, you know, read them voraciously. And and yeah. that was my thing forever. And in the 70s, it was a lot easier because, you know, I had In Search Of mm -hmm. and oh, Bigfoot yeah. was on Six Foot Million or Six Million yeah. Dollar Man. Yeah. It was like a fantastic time to be I'm, into I that weird those stuff. Days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a great time. So yeah, I was just always into it. And now I have seen a UFO, but not until Later. Oh, uh, yeah. La not till I was moving out to California. I saw it in Vegas of all places. Oh, okay. Yeah. And again, it was one of those weird things where I'm like, is everybody seeing this huge triangular 
ship with like circles, kind of like what you picture from like uh, like the Arizona one. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was silent and just going straight over the Excalibur. And people would look up and then just go back to their own thing. And I was like, what? Why like, is, is this, this happening? Yeah. <laughs> and I found out later on when, you know, doing my own show that that's very common, that that people almost come like like peaceful and complacent and just walk away instead of being freaking out and screaming about a UFO. They're probably all drunk. Well, that that helps. That definitely helped me. Well, but yeah, so let me like, ask this: Were you drunk? <laughs> I wasn't. Oh, okay, I swear. Okay, okay, I swear. Okay. I was completely sober when I saw it. But yeah, it was one of those weird things, and it was just just kind of floated away in the distance, and that was the end of it. You know, I I, I find it fascinating because you know there are many people that they say, "Oh, I don't believe in UFOs," or "I don't believe in ghosts." But they always well. One time yep. I saw there. There's every time, every single time. Yeah. And, and it's funny how to certain people like us, when we quite don't know what it is, we're like that curiosity. Hopefully that d- don't kill the cat. That's exactly yeah. Um, but then other people are like, eh, okay, and they just move on with their lives. Um, but things like that, you know, I saw a ghost when I was a kid. I saw a UFO when I was a kid, and it wasn't just me. It was family members too. See, that helps when you have that corroboration, right? Right. Yeah. Right. And my, my dad, he didn't believe anything. Like, yeah, I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in UFOs. I don't believe in, you know, Santa Claus, which broke my heart. But <laughs> um, but, uh-huh. but, all my, my mother and my brother and my sisters, we all saw the UFO and definitely believed it. So so that was did kind of instill in me like, oh, I'm not going to be thought as crazy <laughs> yeah that's helpful too is like if you come from that that side of things like i'll believe anything a listener calls in to tell me about right i'll go down that road with them until there's a point where i'm like okay no and i get what you're trying to do thank right. you goodbye right but like it's so bizarre to me that callers will call in and say i don't believe in ghosts and then tell me the most terrifying ghost <laughs> right. story i've ever heard and i'm like right. how can you not believe i know it's like you kind of do you ask them that i do and, and they're, what they, is their what do they say they just go well i mean but i don't know what it is and i'm like well no one does it's you know i always right. say that there's no such thing as a paranormal expert because how can you be a paranormal expert and and so i'm like yeah no one knows what it is that's the point of this it's Something you can't explain just happened to you, and then you start ticking off everything it can't be, and what you're left with is the paranormal, and that's what I love is like that little stuff you can't explain. So when you when you you were definitely interested as a kid, and uh, you, you know as you saw more things, or it intrigued you more. Yeah, like we were talking about. You know, I grew up in Kansas. I uh, I worked corporate for years yeah, i moved to california became a personal trainer all this stuff sure. you know like everybody does um <laughs> i didn't want to be an actor or nothing like that but uh oh, see i did it was a terrible idea bad yeah, idea. I, yeah 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 but I, I i i i always had a fascination towards it always the documentaries i would watch would be about like loch ness like oh yeah we talked about and bigfoot and stuff like that but it was just a passion later in my early 40s now i'm early 50s um is when i started really wanting to make this a full-time gig yeah but what what was the moment for you that made you want to like pursue this as really a not just a part-time sure. career because it's not a part-time oh career. no it this takes, is not a part-time job yeah yeah it, t- it it takes time and effort and energy to oh yeah dedicate to it so when was that moment it was the moment when i realized i was going on like a lot of first dates and <laughs> and would somehow and it must be me i would bring up or the topic would be brought up about ghosts or ufos right. or whatever and then i started realizing oh i'm that crazy guy at the bar that loves to talk about the paranormal stuff <laughs> and it gets to a point where people are like okay that's nice and kind of pat you on the head right, right. and i'm like but if i have my own little corner of the internet I can just do what I like I to do. Talk, what, I talk about all I want. <laughs> and that's, you know, kind of what I did. The first show we did was I, I had a co-host. Her name was Ginny. Uh, it was called Drunken Metaphysical. <laughs> and our, our bit was we would drink until we hit the legal limit, 0.08. <laughs> then we would do the show. Oh, wow. Which was a neat idea, but not sustainable at all. Mm, Every no. week. Oh, it was brutal. And I had a day job still. It was brutal. So I was like, this is not a good idea. (laughs) And then I realized if I just do it on my own and and take it where I want to go, kind of like that old In Search of with Leonard Nimoy, every week I'll talk about a different topic Uh and then I'll debunk stuff that I 
you know, is, I know isn't true. Because again, <laughs> that, you know, like that leaves the stuff that is, and it's the good stuff. And and that's kind of what I did. I was the more I started doing it, the more I realized this is what I want to do. Mm. I really love having genuine conversations with people and finding about their personal experiences. Right. Because that nothing makes me happier than at a party and someone says, oh, I got a ghost story. I'm like, yeah, everybody stop talking. Stop. I want to hear this. Yeah. It's like E.F. Hutton. It is. Seriously, well, everybody. for those young people, <laughs> E.F. Hutton used to be a... Oh, yeah, I just I just should have said, like, oh, I don't get that reference. I know. Man. You're like, yep. yeah, you uh. just told me your age. <laughs> um, so so when when we, you know, again, I, I haven't been fortunate enough. I, I mean, I've been to, to haunted places. I've been to... Uh, you know Roswell. I've, oh, sure. All these different places, but I've never actually went on a which I want to, like a haunted house with Geiger counter. Oh, not Geiger counter. EMF um, readers. EMF, yeah. Geiger oh, counter. I have them all. We should do it. I I was gonna say I would love to because yeah. uh, it's either I'm working or for some reason, but I love going to ghost towns. Oh, me too. I uh, what's that one out in the middle of the desert? Um, oh, um, uh, uh, not San Reno. Um, you know what I'm talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly which one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love. I I just love stopping there every single time. Yeah, you know, it's I've seen it a hundred times, but it's it's something about ghost towns, the history of it. The, I'm the same way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would love to actually go with you sometime. I would love it. I I will find one and I'll I'll, I'll hit you up because I would Please. love it. I have ev- I have the entire gear, anything you can think of, you've ever seen on a ghost hunting show. I've got it. We can use it. I'll show you how to do it. It's it's the best. All right. Tell us about your first time of doing that. Oh, okay. Um, that curious. was in Detroit. In um, Detroit? Well, yeah. How did you get to Detroit? I, I grew up in Detroit. Oh, you yeah. did? Yeah. That's where I grew oh. up. And um, back then, not so much anymore now, but back then, you know, it was literally a ghost town. It was, mm, you know, yeah. everything was burnt out and shell. And so you could just explore any building you wanted and hmm. and no the cops didn't care as long as you weren't burning it down they yeah. could care less right and so that's what my buddies and i would do is we would go around and just explore all of these like crazy old buildings and at first it was just kind of like a dare i dare you to go in there alone <laughs> and then it quickly built up to i kind of do want to just investigate this uh-huh. and so we would we would just investigate and do, we didn't have any of the fun tools right but we could still do all like uh, i heard a knock you know you do shave and a haircut that's my you know my go-to and if you hear that response, you know no one else is in there. And it just – it was thrilling every time. There's never been a time at a, an investigation where I haven't been intrigued. Like even if there's nothing – no paranormal activity going right. on, there's just something about doing an investigation oh. that I absolutely love. I I find it fascinating where most people would be scared. I yeah. mean I'm sure I would get startled if something Oh, yeah. You'll happens, definitely get startled. Yeah. But – it's it makes me more intrigued. <laughs> I, I run towards it. I don't yeah. know if that's the best thing yeah. ever, but that's you know, when when something happens, yeah. I'm the first one that's gonna go right towards that noise and find out what made it. So you your first time sound like it really kinda caught the bug. Yeah. But um when did you start buying the equipment and when was that one time that did frighten you or there has to be a time. Sure. Oh, sure. Oh, I'm sure. sure. Several. But what's the one that just really stood out? To... I can tell you the first one. The first one, I was at a place called the Omen House. I don't know if you know David Omen at all. David Omen. I'm sure if you looked him up, you'd be like, yep, I know him. He was actually at the Parapod Festival. Oh, OK. Um, uh, he, he lives on Cielo Drive, which is where Sharon Tate was. Oh, murdered. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, I was invited to his house a couple of times and did investigations and some weird things were happening. But I wasn't convinced if it was the house or if it was David. And I went there once with a buddy of mine named Sean. And we were who was also at the Parapod Festival. We it? were. Yes, right there. That's exactly, that's his house. The, the the second one to the left. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, so where his house was built was where her, I think, believe her negligee was found or, or whatever she was wearing oh, was all really? bloody and ripped up. And it was, that's where, you know, wow. it was, they, they subdivided it and they built the big house in the corner. But that used to be all that, that plot where she passed away. And um, so we're at David's house. It was Sean at the, across the table from me, me, and then David Ullman at the at the kitchen table, and we're just kind of chatting. Mm-hmm. And David's like, "Oh, Kurt, you love old Hollywood because I do love old Hollywood." He's like, "I got someone um, gave me this photo of Sharon Tate that no one's ever seen," and I said, "Oh, I'd love to see it." And so he hands Sean this little like Polaroid photo of Sharon Tate just on the street corner. Right. It was beautiful, and then Sean you know, delicately handed it to me and then I delicately handed it to David 
And David just throws it on the table like he doesn't care. He's like, <laughs> like whatever. The second he threw it on the table, the door to his garage, that like not the garage door that comes up right. for a car, but the door to his garage kicked open. The hardest I've ever seen a door get kicked open. Hmm. And all of us, even David, and that's why I knew it was genuine when he was like, what the, you know, like swearing. <laughs> and I ran over there and there was nobody in there. There was no wind. The door was locked and it was kicked with such force that the, wow. the doorknob part hit the wall. Did it dent the wall? Yeah, yeah, dent the oh, wall, wow. like where that little, you know, the lock part is. And it was insane. There was no possible reason why that door could kick open like that other than he, you know, <clears throat> dissed Sharon Tate, if you will, and she wasn't standing for it. And how, how do you, when something like that happens, how do you approach it? Because I feel that spirits you still need to have give them respect in ways a hundred percent yes so how do you approach respectably a situation like that and to even go deeper into an investigation a hundred percent i am very big on not going into an investigation and screaming and swearing at a yeah, ghost you see people they try to yeah you know kind of piss them off they and do <laughs> and I, I don't understand why i mean it, it, it wouldn't work back in the day why would it work now right and if someone kicked in my door and started swearing at me, I wouldn't be like, all right, let's hang out. Let's talk. Right. I'd be like, nah, I'm not talking to this guy. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, you know, so like, the, the, you know, obviously I went over there made sure it wasn't somebody, like it wasn't a gimmick. There was somebody right. hiding in the, you know, the garage. And then I picked up the photo and just kind of set it down. And, you know, he's like, sorry, Sharon. You know, he knew he messed up like right away. But I, I always go in, you know, especially at Mentryville. I was saying that uh, just the other day. Like when you go into Mentryville, there's three different locations yeah. and there's three, at least three, now nah, four different entities. And you have to be very careful how you react to them or mm -hmm. how you interact with them, really. And I'm always of the way of I'm going to be most respectful person I can. If they want to talk with me, great. But it's like it's a haunted location. It's not the haunted mansion. You're not guaranteed right, right, stuff, you know. Right. <laughs> so I'm always going in like if they want, that'd be great. If not, you know, it wasn't my wasn't my luck of the draw today. And I, I'm sure, especially that's a good point uh, because there was there's a schoolhouse. Yeah. There is a house. The, yep. the main house. There's a barn. The barn. Yeah. Uh, there's a, a, a movie set. Yeah. That the they, Green Acres. The one. Green yeah. Acres movie yeah. set. So there's a lot of uh, energy. From different eras and yeah. different, because I don't even think the schoolhouse was ne te technically was at that location from the beginning. No, so it, was it, brought was, there. it was brought there. So yeah. some of these spirits are not connected to each other. Yeah, that's what I figure. It's got to be just yeah. different spirits. And there was like, there was a death that happened right outside the schoolhouse at the flagpole. Mm -hmm. um, but that flagpole wasn't there. Like you said, it was moved there. Right. So why is it? something attached to it but but i quickly realized you know when i was at the schoolhouse that there's two definitely distinct different spirits there yeah and then in the house it's an older male very authoritative um mm -hmm. chauvinistic spirit <laughs> and then in the barn it just seems something that just wants to mess with people so it's Could it, it is. an animal like a... i don't know i don't know what the barn one is the barn one always confuses me it's upstairs it seems to want to push women so oh. i don't it's like a really weird hmm. Weird vibe in the barn, actually. How do, how how do you determine that? How do you how do you, are do you are you uh, intuitive? Are you I'm not. psychic? I wish I was. So, and and some yeah. every psychic I have on my show says, well, that's not true. You you definitely have I the think gift. We all do, yeah, yeah. And I I think so too. I think like, but I just don't have the. I haven't honed that skill, I yeah. guess. But no, I just go by you know what I can see, what I can hear, uh -huh. um, what I feel. I'm definitely you know em empathic in that sense. Like if mm -hmm. it feels oppressive in there then i'll go with it as something's oppressive yeah whereas like you know like the schoolhouse it was a kid a hundred percent was a kid yeah. and then there was something else that happened in the back that i'll talk about but the first one was definitely a kid and <laughs> and the way it interacted with some of the guests i was like yeah this is the way that a kid would interact a kid wants attention <laughs> it's like when you're at like a dinner party you know like your parents mm -hmm. when you were a kid and your parents had a dinner party right and you wanted to get the attention of all your parents friends right it was like that the whole time. Yeah, I I had a lot of nieces and nephews, and there was one niece that oh my gosh, she was so hyper and and just <laughs> wanted attention constantly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but how how do you approach that? Because so, like you say, uh, as an investigator, you know, being respectful and knowing that this might be a child. See, that one's the tough one because ch children don't understand adults. No. 
wisdom or adults communication as well as no or why they're there or yeah. maybe stuck there right and, and that's it's the sad one and it's also the one that if something was to scare me it would be a kid ghost like that like that, that would probably make me a little more a creepier. disembodied kid laughter in the middle of the night that sounds terrifying <laughs> right. it just sounds terrifying <laughs> right but you know so i gotta you know keep that you know in in mind but i was very mindful when i was at the schoolhouse at mentoryville to be respectful of the chalkboard where the, you yeah. know all the teachers desk like everything mm -hmm. and anybody that came in i was welcoming like oh, come on in let's you know sit around i'll tell you what all the tools are and i put out the rem pod and the mm -hmm. laser grid and the emf detectors and just was kind of explaining them and we all noticed real quick with the first group when we we're ignoring that we're in a haunted location and we're kind of just talking about haunted locations the REM pod would go off like, hello, you're in one right now. Right. And it was the first I was like, oh, interesting. I don't know. You know, obviously, I have no idea who I'm talking to. Right. So I was talking to them like an adult. But like I said, it was quickly apparent that it was a kid because anytime we would go back to our adult conversation, right. it would do the kind of I want attention kind of a thing. <laughs> and I was like, interesting. I like that. And it wasn't until... Um, one of the guests of Parapod Festival was a little girl named Aubrey. I don't know if you remember her. I do remember her. Yeah, yes. she was fantastic. She, she brought a little doll in. I remember that, yeah. And that doll, she sat down, and I was just showing somebody. They were like, oh, you don't have a fleer. And I said, oh, I do. And I put the fleer out. And I was like, oh, there's something right dead center of the room that's hot. But this whole area, the whole schoolhouse is only 59 degrees. And it was the doll. And at first, I was like, all right, logic the doll was left in the car or Aubrey was hugging right. it the whole time. It's body heat. I'll keep an eye on that. So I didn't say anything for the first 15, 20 minutes. And the doll kept getting hotter and hotter and hot for four hours throughout the day. Wow. And I was like, there's no explanation. There's no sunlight hitting it. There's no, you know, electricity, as you know, right. there was none. And I was like, that's interesting. There's a little girl who was in a schoolhouse with a doll <laughs> And she's getting more interaction than any of us. We're talking to a kid. And so as soon as we started talking to it like it was a kid, then she really reacted. And the only reason I say she is because I had Aubrey ask, are you a boy? REM pod, dead silent. Are you a girl? And it went off like someone was playing a theremin. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I was like, there you go. There's a little girl wow. in here that wants attention. So... For our audience that really don't know, and and, and some of sure. these that I have not, like I said, I've never really used. I've I've worked with, I'm not worked. I've messed around with them. Um, can we go through yeah. some of the sure. equipment yeah. that you're saying? And I'm gonna I'm gonna first put up EMF detector. EMF yeah. detector. So can you tell the audience? Because some people out there are going, I want to do this, and I want. Oh I, sure. And I wanna I want to. Uh, before we get into that, uh, after we go through these, I want to actually have you explain how to protect themselves. Sure. Before, so, but I'm gonna, I wanna, before we do that, I'm gonna go back to this EMF. So explain sure. what this yeah. does and yeah. electromagnetic field. So the EMF detector, all it does, it's it was a tool that wasn't designed for paranormal investigation. Oh, it wasn't. No. So it is just it's designed to show where there's an electromagnetic field around you right. for like electricians or whatnot. And if obviously uh, like this room, it would be going crazy because there's a lot of elect electronics in here. And just so people know that the, the homes did not have any electricity none. at all. None. Mentryville is a dead zone, even for yeah. like cell signal, none. There's and one light yep. in the front. That's it. Yep, that's but right. The homes are, by the pool. do have any yeah. electricity. So. Yeah. And it was really, that's the, that was my favorite thing was because a, a lot of the times on, on paranormal investigation shows, um, I won't name which ones, but there's some where they're just waving around an EM de <laughs> right. EMF detector in a theater right next to like, you know, like the, the, the main circuit breaker, you know? And I'm like, of course it's going to go off. You're in front of electricity. Right. <laughs> but if used properly, an EMF detector is really good. You, you know, the way I use it is I set it down. I don't, I don't wave it around because you're bound to hit someone's cell phone in their right, pocket or right. something like that. But um, I'll set it down. And you can, there are some where you can actually reset, like set it to the room. Mm -hmm. So it knows all of the electronics in the room and you can kind of reset it to that. Right. Um, and so the REM, the EMF detector and the REM pod are my two favorite ones because if it goes off, there is no reason why it'll randomly go off. <laughs> Something is causing it to go off. And an EMF is just that, electromagnetic field. And the wow. theory is that that's what ghosts use is electricity or they have some form of electromagnetic field that'll cause it to go off. 
So, and also, Mentryville is about a half a mile before you get to Mentryville. There's no cell service. None. It goes zero. Yep. Like you can't, you have to walk to the top <laughs> of the, the, the yep. hill or drive about a half a mile yeah. down the road to get cell service. So no electricity, no cell, cell service. No reason why any of these electronics should go right. off. Yeah. And so that is a good a good location for almost proof oh, yeah. of Oh yeah, this. and the the so the REM pod is the next one. Um, Let me pull that up so we, yeah. we can show them. The REM pod is roughly the same thing. It uses electromagnetic field as well, but it'll have um, an antenna in the center, and it is all. It's basically a theremin. It's the same kind of thing. The closer you get to the antenna, the more sound will happen and the more lights will light up. But um, the reason I like the REM pod is. Visually, it is very apparent if something's nearby and, and auditory as well, but it's very apparent. And you can actually say to an entity, like, go closer to the red light in, you know, this, the red light in the center of the room right there. Perfect. So you can say, go close to that red light. And the closer they get to that, all of those little lights on the top, those little LEDs will start mm -hmm. to go off and the tone will go higher and higher and higher. And the, the tone will go higher as something gets closer? Yeah, or... closer to the antenna. Got yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And so that's another good one because, again, if you set it in the middle of the room and then you push the button in the center to kind of center it, to reset right. it, there is no reason a REM pod will go off. As <laughs> long as you've got a fresh battery. If you've got a, you know, a battery that's dying, right. REM pods and EMF detectors will go off. But always, always have fresh batteries with so you. Always, and, but but I, I've heard... Yep. Well, go ahead. I was going to say, and have more than you need because they're going to drain the drain batteries. It. Why? Why yeah. is that? Is it Again, just because they feed off energy? Yeah, they're using whatever energy is around them to try and communicate. Uh, the theory is that right. they're using the energy around them. But I have seen. I've brought in. I've brought in a stack of fresh batteries and just watch all of my devices go, go from zero right, right to zero. And they ne they can't drain that fast. Right. But I can. Oh, this one's dead now. Next one. This one's dead now. And it's in, there's no out there again, like I've tried, I always try to find the logical explanation mm -hmm. and there's, there is none. How can you explain that? And what, and what would, uh, somebody that wants to get into this for the first time, um, what, what is something that they can purchase if they don't want to spend a lot? Sure. And then, um, then I want to get into the protection. Part. Sure. So, that's, that's important one too. Yeah. yeah. Um, the one thing I would say, avoid ghost apps. Anything that oh, says those, it's a ghost app on your phone. I'm sorry, those <laughs> it's crap. It's yeah. just it's just BS. And I, I feel bad because everybody that was at Parapod Festival was walking around with one of those ghost yeah. apps. And I'm like, it's just random. Squirrel. Yeah, exactly. Bird. Oh. <laughs> Ovilus. Uh, that's a, that's one I don't waste your money on an Ovilus. I've yet to be determined. Obviously, like that's what that does. Yeah. It just says random words. It is never connected to anything yeah. I've ever had. Yeah. Um, but the, I would say EMF detector. It's quick. It's it's cheap. You can buy them on Amazon. Depending on how fancy you want it to be, you can mm -hmm. spend up to 50 bucks. But you can spend 20 bucks and have a good EMF detector. And it's hmm. always reliable. If, something, if it's going off and you're not pointing it at, at an outlet on a wall, if it's going off, there's a reason it's going off. And once you, again, always try to, you know, discount the reason it's going off. Mm -hmm. But once you end up with the things it can't be, all right, what is it then? Why is it going off? There's something in the room. And it's every time, including at Mentryville, every time the EMF detector went off. And I was like, there we go. There's something because there's no possible reason that device should be going off. Do you believe there, some people do, some people don't believe that there's a good and bad spirit? Yes. Yes is a <clears> good, <throat> yes, they're yeah. good yeah, I, bad? I believe there are good and bad. Okay. And, and the reason I say that is because I've again, it's only feelings and I'm not psychic by any stretch, but there is definitely oppressive feelings that you get. And sure, like yeah. you can get scratched and whatnot, but I'm just talking about like just the 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 ones that I've experienced mm -hmm. where I've had this nice talk with this little girl ghost. But all of a sudden there's this weird thing that just shot off in the corner of the, the, the schoolhouse, which it did. Right. And I was like, what was that black blacker than black shadow? Where did that come from and why was it there mm. and why is it not interacting the way that this kinda, other spirit was? that depressed boy in the corner? Yeah, like I don't know what it was. It was yeah. so crazy. But yeah, that's... yeah unfortunately, there are um, – I did – one of the earliest episodes I did for my podcast was um, at a woman's house called Debbie Moffitt. 
And I don't know why her story is not bigger than it is. It should be as big as like The Exorcist or Amityville Horror. Right. She had a demon in her house in the 80s. And this thing was horrific. It killed her dog. Oh I mean, gosh. it was horrific. They were It would throw knives. Knives that weren't in her house would appear out of nowhere and get stuck like right next to where the, oh her gosh. and her kids were sitting. It's like and, an interdimensional type of thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was horrific. And it was writing on the mirrors. And I, I do think that... She was kind of egging it on a little bit. And, and you know, you don't want to do that. If it's negative, you definitely right. don't want to. For sure. And she didn't know how to protect herself. And um, when I was at her house, I was like, oh, it's a nice little house. But as we were talking about it, the more we started talking about it, the, the colder the room got. Mm. And I was like, I don't like this. And then I was like, well, whatever. It's just my imagination because we're talking about a demon right. in, in the house where it happened. Um, and it wasn't until a couple months later that a listener messaged me and said, you know, you've got an uh, um, EVP on your um, on your episode. And I said, no, I don't. I've, I, I, I edited it. I listened to that. And there's no right. possible way. <laughs> and so they sent me the time. And sure while enough. there's only four people in this whole house, I know the four people were where we were. Right. While we're in the middle of like talking about the demon, you hear, take them, take them all. In the in the scariest if I would have heard whisper. that, I would have been like, right? and gone. <laughs> and um, thank you. Good night. Right? right. Right. So I was like, OK, there is still something that's slightly attached to it. And it is not happy when you're talking about it. Yeah, I, I I've never experienced uh, like the the spirit that I grew up with. It was I think it was just the old man that built the home. He was a banker that built the home in the early 1900s sure i've and so i never felt threatened even though it's a little spooky it's spooky but yeah i mean 90 percent of the time that's all it is yeah. it's just someone who hasn't crossed over yeah. i mean depending on you know what you believe or or is just you know stuck there and i I found that most of them are residual hauntings where it's just like a tape player playing oh, back yeah. over and over maybe again. not necessarily so, the spirits yeah. there it's just like a yeah 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 it's like just, a mirror hitting back and forth that's exactly it yeah i mean yeah. It, there's a lot of theories about quartz and running water, underground running water mm -hmm. that stores energy. And, you know, quartz does store energy. They use it in watches and whatnot. So that the theory is that it's just like a tape player, that every now and then it just something hits play and it plays that. that that's why you see ghosts kind of like walking through walls, walls that, you know, stuff, at yeah. one time there was probably a room there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but I'm sure this has happened to you where you walk into a room your whole body chills the hair stands yep. up and you don't feel safe yeah oh yeah uh do you feel that that is a warning or do, what do you feel that or not necessarily yeah. a warning or do you feel that that's a heavy presence or is it just energy no i think i mean it's definitely energy because if there i've been in rooms like there's <clears throat> like faraday cages where mm -hmm. if, the, if the wiring wasn't built right like old theaters there's tons of those where right. the, there's just wiring running everywhere and there's a faraday cage and you'll get that that panicky feeling for no right. reason right but if that if that isn't the case then <clears throat> yeah that's exactly it is what's causing it what in your you know reptile brain or whatever <laughs> is making you go oh god there's something here right. i gotta i gotta be aware of it and and i listen to it you know like again i'm not psychic by any stretch but if you get that feeling try and be like all right why am i feeling this what's yeah. going on what's is there yeah. something around here causing it have you ever been to mount wilson i have yeah so i believe there's a sign that says you know it can affect cars sure so this is almost in a way to me that proves the energy of spirits. Yeah. We don't see, we go to Mount Wilson, you park your car in the lot, you don't see anything. Like you just see beauty, you see the mountains, you see yep. the forest. Uh, me and that we filmed something up there once and the people that we drove separately, their car wouldn't start. Really? And it, then I saw the sign where it says your car might have d mechanical issues yeah. due to the electrical, you know, because it's these big towers up there. Oh, yeah. So for me, I was thinking, well, this is really almost like a spirit. It's exactly it. It's absorbing like, energy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if if uh, people don't believe, go to a place like Mount Wilson and, and uh, t just check because i'm curious if you take a emf up there if that thing's gonna just i've never done it i would be actually interested I, I'm in that curious yeah it would have to i mean it would pick it up if you put it on your dashboard i guarantee you somewhere throughout the day it would go off same with the rem pod it would go off because right. something again there's electricity and there's yeah. you know there's a lot of those there's those you know lights in north carolina that that are unexplainable lights right. and it just seems to be some kind of energy in the hills or in the you know the the topography yeah right. yeah all right so 
back to protecting yourself. Yep. Um, we do a show here uh, on my network uh, with Char Margolis, who is a psychic yeah. medium. Uh, before she does any reading, she does a prayer for prote- protection. Yep. Uh, a lot of people do some type of ritual to protect themselves. What do you do and what do you recommend sure. people that go into these haunted places that you you don't know what you're going to run into it's important to do it it really is and i've learned that lesson and and by the way <laughs> uh, like, char is fantastic I when i saw her oh man when she did her presentation there i was trying to be like the debunker in the back and oh, even you got I, to go see her oh yeah oh, and even i was great. like i don't know how she's doing that and that's incredible i love it oh it, yeah 50 fantastic. over 50 years of doing what she does so and it's not i i went in Sadly, I, I'll admit to this. I went in with the magician mindset of I'm going to figure out her trick. I know it's a people <laughs> skill and I'm going right. to figure it out. And I couldn't. It, it's yeah. not. It really yeah. isn't. But yeah, um, you have to protect yourself. And I'm not exactly the most religious person in the world. Mm-hmm. I don't consider myself an atheist, but I don't think any religions kind of got it right. Right. But I've gone into locations. And then when I got home, I felt physically, mentally drained mm-hmm. for days after. Yeah. And, and it's not a normal like draining it's it's like the worst like kind of covid drain you've ever felt in your life where it hurts like in your teeth and your bones right right. and it took me a couple of times to go oh and you know kind of connect the dots i'm like oh i'm just walking in being all like hey ghost talk to me (laughs) and then they are and i'm not stopping them and they can go home with you they can go anywhere they really want to even if they're attached to a location why would they I, I I never understood that part of it because if they are attached to a location of like oh, this was where my home was this is where my my baby died sure. or I was buried here I get that but why would I think it's cuz the energy you're putting that energy out there like I'm here I believe you I want to talk to you right and you've got so much energy that they're almost like they're energy like, oh, vampires like attraction yeah oh like yeah. oh you're hot exactly yeah exactly <laughs> like i'm taking some of that yeah right. yeah and and i felt it and it's brutal and i didn't i didn't grasp that what that's what i was doing i was going into it dumb for for decades right you know i was just you know the dumb kid like trying yeah. to scare my friends or scare my girlfriend and then now <laughs> i realize that you know you you do have to take a moment and i don't necessarily have a prayer that i say the same every time but I do say, like, in my mind, I never say it out loud. I will do say something to the effect of, like, I'm here. I'm here for this duration. If you want to interact with me, here's where you can do it. Right. If I say no or if I say stop, that's the Your end. safe word. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, give them a safe word. And also say, like, and when I'm done, that's it. You're not following me home. You're not You're not coming with me. <clears throat> you're not going to absorb all of my energy. Right. And there's a lot of a lot of people. I think Char even said it. Like always have like you know like or Patty maybe always have like cookies or or nuts or something that would to be always. Patty, yeah, I think. sounds like her. <laughs> um, you know, and it's not. It's it's true. Like at the end of the day, you're so exhausted yeah. from nothing, from walking around a sanitarium. You know, yeah. um, oh but gosh. there is something there. It really is. And uh, I, I've had a friend of mine, Todd, who is well into way more than I am how to protect myself and. He's done a couple things for me. Oh, that's good. Yeah, unbeknownst to me, one of them, and then told me the second time because he's like, "Hey, man, I'm just telling you right now. There's something with you right now, and I'm gonna get rid of it real quick. Right. And then we can talk." And it, it's good to have friends like that. And and I, I, you know, I thank him for it every time because as much as I'm a skeptical believer, if it happens to you again and again and again. All right, there is something there. I should right. be being a little bit smarter about this. And I think. Uh, even in in life i've i'm a i'm an empath i've always i i never knew what that was until later in life sure but i would always take on people's energies i would always um feel the depression and i always thought it was me and yeah i mean it, possibly there could have been some of that too but i remember in, i lived in kansas city and i went somewhere and the this one person was such a negative energy I was almost depressed for two days. I didn't yeah. want to be around anybody. And then I was like, wait a minute. I was fine and dandy until I met this person. I'm like, wow, I'm actually pulling the energy from See, this we've person. got to really protect you then if you go on someplace because it can really take you. Yeah, like that times a thousand. Well, I've the older I've gotten, I've learned how to protect myself. Oh, nice. Yes. So now I don't take uh, like this is not this is not my energy. This is yours, and so I do kind of say my own little 
prayer yeah, just to see, protect it. So how did you learn how to do it? So that, like, I'll, I'll turn it back on you if you don't mind, because <laughs> sure. I'm very curious on how, how you learned to do something like that. Um, honestly, I've been... I, I've always been very aware of my body and my mental state and um, because, I, like I said, I was a personal trainer. I was, you know, fitness and all this sure. stuff. And so I always kind of knew when something was not feeling right. And I, like I said, it's like walking into a room and going, I don't like that person. I don't know that person. Right. But I don't like that energy. So I will just say, nice to meet you. And, and go the other way. See, I love that. And, and yeah. even going into a place uh, like an, at Mentryville, I'm like, you know, this this was their this was their life. This was their energy. This was their, you know, moment in time. Yeah. And I'm secure, strong, and safe in my being now. So it's really just telling myself to protect. And like you said, it, it's it's a good idea to tell them directly. Yeah. Like yeah. you know, it's I'm here. If you want to speak with me, great. But if uh, you want to attach yourself to me, you're not welcome. Yeah, and and like I said, you know, there's been, there's been times where I have had scratches where I was like, I know I didn't bump wow. into anything. I can't explain where that came from. Um, but you know, like you never, I'm never fully aware of my arms at all times. Right. So maybe I did bump into something. You know, I always go into that little skeptical side like, of things. Yeah, yeah. but like, yeah, like you we're know, we're getting old. We bruise easy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> bump into something I'll, I'll feel it next couple of days but yeah like so i just always just assume like you know it's better to be safer than sorry yeah and i've and i've never had an instant since i do that so you know you know what's funny i i never understood this and maybe you can explain it people like just tell them to go to the light and they'll go to the light and, and i'm like but then if it was that easy right i agree with that statement because i don't believe it's that easy no. for them to just because I feel maybe the the spirit has to trust you more. Maybe if they to listen to you to that extent. Because, maybe, but you but know, I just don't feel that I don't, that I don't those I, no. few words will change their yeah maybe two hundred three hundred thousand years of being on this. See, planet. that's that's where I'm right there with you. And and when again when I see it on ghost hunting shows and they're like, and they left, and I was like, it was all you had to do was tell them to go to the light, and they could just disappear. Right. No one has said that to yeah, them ever, ever in ever. all of the parent. No. I don't buy it. Yeah, I don't buy it either. I, I've never done it because if it's not that easy, well, then I just made a spirit mad. Now, talk about <laughs> right. of a spirit. Now they're going to come home exactly. and kill my cat or something. Like, it's not that easy. <laughs> We've tried this. We're still stuck here. Yeah. So I'm like, no, I can't be that You're easy. You're like, which light? I see many. And that's the thing. You know, like, I can't see a light. Is there even a light there? Maybe you got a one and done chance to do it. I don't know how this stuff works, you know? And you said you're, you're, you're skeptical, which I think, honestly... This, the people that have been skeptics are sometimes the most uh, reasonable and reliable when it comes to when they start believing. Sure. Oh, yeah. Where some people are just like, I believe in everything. Everything's paranormal. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. 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 Um, but have you ever went to a psychic and had a reading to speak with loved ones or i have i've tried a couple of times how was that for you um i've had one experience that i still can't explain most of the time i can at the end of it again kind of do that magician's people right. trick like i have seen i've been to many mm -hmm. you know quote unquote psychics um where there's an audience and they'll say um has anybody got an older relative that died? No. Nobody here has got right. an older relative You're that like, died. Hmm, no. Jeez. <laughs> anybody with an M name? Um, no. Nobody knows anybody with an M name. Like that kind of stuff where I'm like, uh, nope, check you off. But I had a psychic on in my show, uh, Jenny Pugh. And I, I was like, you know, I want, you, I want you on the show. And she's like, oh, cool. How do you use, uh, you know, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I use StreamYard. I'll send you a link. Right. And she goes, no, we're not going to use StreamYard. We're going to use Zoom. And I went, okay, that's my show. No, no I, I like StreamYard. And she's like, I'm telling you, it's not going to work that day. And I'm like, it works every time. Didn't and my work. power went out. Oh, no. So I could only use Zoom on my phone. Oh, And wow. I was like, all right, that's neat. And she's like, look, I didn't want to say that that's going to happen. And you wouldn't believe me if I would have said it. Right. So I was like, all right, check one for her. <laughs> and then um, so I asked her, I asked her, I said, you know, how do you how do you talk to a dead friend or a dead relative because I had had a buddy that just died. Right. And I'm like, how do you do it? Do I have to say his name? Do I, you know, like, you know, call it three times like Beetlejuice? Right. Like, what are the rules, <laughs> right. you know? And she goes, she goes, no, you can just, just start talking. He'll hear you. And I said, well, does that mean he can see me at any time? And she's like, 
he's not going to watch you masturbate. And she's like, <laughs> and she goes, I'm hearing the loudest, deepest laugh I've ever heard in my life right now. <laughs> and that was my buddy, Joe, and the one I was oh, asking about. Yeah, you know, yeah. you said something even remotely like that. He just bellowed a laugh. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, all right, score two for Jenny Pugh. I can't explain oh, I that one it. either. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's I've never had somebody, though, I've, I've, I want it. I desperately want it. Someone to say, like. You had a friend who died in you know a car accident in 1992. Right. You know, like that's what I want and desperately want that. But it's never, no one's ever been that spot on with me. You know, uh, Char is amazing, but one that honestly that stood out to me the most. Even Patty's great. Sure. But Colby Rebel. Ooh. Okay. She was has been the most accurate that I've ever seen. So if anybody out there that, that wants you know a reading, she has been the most accurate than I've ever seen anybody about really? names, things that's happened, getting married, having children, all that stuff. Yeah, I've I I worked with her too and I've always I I I am a little bit of, of a, a skeptic in some ways because I feel like there's a lot of psychics out there that are just oh yeah blowing smoke. Oh yeah. Um but I have to say Char how when I first met Char she, when she came in honestly I never heard of Char before I met her. This was like 8 years ago. Uh, when I met her, we were just talking in my office, and then she goes, "Who's so and so?" And I, I love that. And I was like, hmm. "And I'm a big family history person, so I know my great 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 oh, great, wow. great great great. I mean, I know that, you know because most people are like, who's your great grandparents? I don't know. I don't know. So I do. And so she was like, "Who's so and so?" And I was like, um, "I honestly, I don't know." And then she goes, "Okay." B, B, who's Blanche? And I'm like, uh, that's my grandma. I'm like, who, where did Blanche come from? I mean, wow, Blanche is not a name that you say yeah, often. That's not Mary. That's not Joe. That's right. not John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and then she did say Jay, and I'm like, well, my dad's name's John, my sure. uncle's name's Jim, and then I had a Uncle Floyd that went a nickname. I'm not going to say it, but <laughs> Jay. Uh, but after the, I was like, oh, you know, I this I called my sister. I said, oh my gosh, my I met this uh, lady named Char, and she was came up with Grandma's name, Blanche, and the, but she said this other name, and I said, I honestly I don't know it. And she goes, actually, that was the name only her sister's her nickname that she called really? was called, and I was like, I didn't even know it. I didn't See, even know that it. I love that something you yes. couldn't even know. I yeah, love I that. I didn't even know it. And so she, I was like, Oh crap. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's when I was like, okay, Char's legit. See, I, I love that kind of stuff. That's never, that's the stuff that I want. I want yeah. something because there was a while ago, my old show, the first podcast I did, um, there was a person that was like, Oh, you got to go to this psychic. They're in Atwater village. <clears throat> I'm like, all right, that's close by. I'll do right, that. Right. It'll be fun content for the show. And so I went to the, the psychic and, and she's like, Oh, perfect. Um, it's 48 hours. Uh, you know, I'm busy for the next 48 hours. So we'll schedule for Sunday. I said, sure. And she's like, cool. And fill this out. And I was like, okay. And it was First name, last name, mother's maiden oh, name. God. What's your what's your you know Facebook? What's your Instagram? And I'm like, no, I'm not giving you 48 hours to find out right. everything you can about me. <laughs> no, nope. see ya. You're like you had a you had a uh, uh, hurt your foot in a car accident, right? Or something, and you're standing in with crutches on your Instagram. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, yeah, you went to a birthday party last week. Yeah, I posted all about it. Yeah, like, no. uh, yeah stuff like that. I those normally corner you that's know, exactly what she don't, was don't you know he's got that neon that. hand in the sun in the window and i'm like don't no. spend your money no <laughs> god no. no well as the halloween season we only have about four or five minutes left i can't believe it's already oh, been wow. about 50 minutes but um halloween season this was that we're launching it today you yeah. know two days it's october how do you prepare for this type of time of year? And what does Halloween Halloween mean to you when it comes to now that you're kind of in this genre? I, I love Halloween just, you know, by myself. But ever since doing the podcast, obviously, people start to look right. for this stuff and listen to it more. So I always want to have something big for Halloween season. So this Halloween season, I'm, I'm trying a couple of new things. I'm going to even try TikTok, which I don't think I should do. Yeah, but I, I've tried. It's, it's hard. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I have too much stuff. But I'm going to do it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so this time I'm going to do 
all the all the locations of the Black Dahlia murder. Oh yeah, from the including the very last possible one at a little motel that uh, this author thought she might have I been murdered that at. Doing that. Yeah, so like I want to do fun Hollywood stuff where right. where you know where celebrities died, and even do a couple of uh, like one I haven't even told my told my listeners yet. This is for you. <laughs> breaking um, news. Yeah, <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> I'm gonna bring my my paranormal equipment to where river phoenix died right outside of the viper oh, room wow and i want to see I if i can get some if, yeah i just want to see if there's any energy at some of these like known death sites and wow. and not you know i you don't have to spend the whole point of it is for my listeners is you don't have to spend a ton of money to paranormal investigate right. you can just get a you know a tape recorder and just listen back just do short bursts you mm -hmm. know is anybody here and then play it back um so that's what i want to do i want to show them that anybody can go out and do it and it doesn't have to be uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, you don't have to spend money at like Queen Mary for their tour. You can it's, go anywhere and do it. Yeah. If you think that there's something paranormal has ever happened there, go do it. Go I check mean, it out. Hollywood or any, any, any small, old oh, yeah. small town. I mean, you, it's hard to say there's not a place on earth that's not affected by some kind exactly. of Exactly. Any event theater, or, yeah, theater, any hotel, yeah. like almost yeah. every hotel is haunted. Almost every theater is haunted. Yeah. So you don't have to do, you know, a ton of stuff. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but you can still do really neat your own paranormal investigations. And like I said, even in California, there's so many ghost towns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, old churches. Uh, I, and I, yep. One of my f most favorite places uh is um oh my god it, it i'm going blank the uh bonanza the ponder what's that the paramount ranch no no that's where no, no that's up where, in uh, uh up in the uh reno right outside of reno it's uh up in the mountains it's a oh silver town um shoot. i can't think of what it's all i don't, I don't know okay now i gotta look it up but there's so many places that you don't have to spend money. No, and that's exactly it. Yeah, you don't have to yeah. spend any money. And again, if you just get like a tape recorder or an a, you know just an EMF detector, and you just go out and do right. it, and you can you can even mimic basically any paranormal investigation TV show that's out there. Is anybody with me? What's your name? And do it in short burst and go play back and listen to it. You can record on your phone. You don't even need. You can just bring just your phone. You got video. You got audio. Right. You can do everything there. And that's why I want to show my listeners is that you don't have to spend a ton that. of money to do it. Yeah. I love that. Kurt, yeah. you're amazing. And oh, I, thank you. And thank you. You're going to have to come back. Maybe you, I would love we to. can co-host sometime. I would love that. Are you yeah. kidding? This is fantastic. I had such a blast. Thank you. All right. So tell everybody about your podcast and where they can listen sure. and you know you you were nominated uh for, i was it was for... an honor to be nominated it really was oh, that well, was the you. sweetest best thing in the world uh paranormal almanac uh you can you can listen to it wherever you get your podcasts um it's gonna be on youtube i'm gonna start doing that starting october as well you've almost... never been youtube yet no i didn't want to do it i wanted to just focus on just audio and wow. like i did do some live shows that were on like facebook live right. and, and and uh twitch and youtube for a little mm -hmm. bit but now i'm really going for like hopefully a week well, i'll say knock on wood hopefully a weekly show on on youtube as well wow good yeah. for you well uh, from one host to another, I appreciate you for doing that. You doing what you do. It's, you I have think, such a great show. Thank oh, you so thank much. Thank you, and, and thank you for just taking the time and out of your day and yeah. coming up here. Are you kidding? This is a blast. I know, and he's going to have to sign the wall. He just just don't read the small print, okay? <laughs> um, but uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll get to go to a haunted house together. I'm serious. I want to get you on an investigation. I would love it. I do too. I I I have all my GoPros and everything else. If you want to, yeah. we can use those. But uh, but. I appreciate all you guys for tuning in and uh, thank you for supporting Truth Be Told and uh, Robert Hensley on Minuteman Report, Bonnie uh, Burkard on uh, Truth Be Told Transformation and uh, we're all part of the Club Paranormal now and uh, you can like our YouTube channel, you can listen to us on all the podcast outlets, you, you can even, there's so many out there but uh, until next time, thank you guys uh, for supporting us, and thanks, uh, Kurt, for coming in. Support him as much as you can, because uh, people like us, that we, we, we feed off these spirits, and we feed off your, your uh, support. So uh, until next time, thank you so much for tuning in for Truth Be Told. Take care. Bye. This has been another episode of Truth Be Told. Thank you so much for watching. Recorded live at UBN Go Studios in Burbank, California. Join us on social media. Facebook, Truth Be Told Radio. Instagram, Truth Be Told Paranormal. Go to Truth Be Told Worldwide for more information on upcoming shows.